My name is Zion Elia Ben Yokose. And this is like my third or fourth attempt at making a video <laughs> with my dad because I want to get it right. I want to get things exactly as best it should be um, as possible. That's part of the reason why we're here to speak to you. Is when you examine everything around you and you're truly honest, it doesn't it doesn't take much to figure out that something. When you look at everything from politics and governments of this world to religions uh, to the sciences and things like that, uh, there's something wrong with all of it. Now, even naming them separately, governments, religion, politics, you know, right? government, religion, politics, uh, sciences. It shouldn't be like that. So my dad and I, and I are here uh, to present some things to you. They're going to be pretty heavy. Uh, uh, we're not here to cause trouble. We're not here to, uh, in any way, try to provoke violence or hatred or anything like that. My dad is Yahweh Hwase, the Almighty. And he's not me. And his only begotten son is the same person, the same name, Yahweh Hase, Oyong, not Elohim. So, we're going to talk about that later. so he's one and the same person. So he has no beginning or end in size, and the reason why he's able to have an only begotten son who is one aspect to him, and in the dad, but yet he's one, is because. He has no beginning in size, for one thing. Whereas we create a person too. Mm -hmm. We have a capacity, a certain capacity. See? Like I'm six foot one and a little bit more. So whereas maybe another man might be five foot ten or six foot eight or, 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 or whatnot. So that's a physical capacity. But your soul, every every man, every created man has a, the same capacity, the soul. Every woman has the same capacity. So, addressing all of the things in this world that are so messed up is one of our missions. And the reason why is because when you look at everything and you think to yourself uh, something's wrong, or maybe you don't consciously think something's wrong, and that's something wrong with that. Because at the end of the day, uh, if you if you look into it, we've got less than a hundred years, according to even the, the the unsaved scientists here, even the ones that argue with each other, until everything's gone. Um, and there's something wrong with that. How did we get to that point? How did how did they get there? Uh, you got religions, politics, governments, and they all think they're right. The and, and even the, the implication, I, I should say, um, of, of one, one, one country being different government than the next country is that they're implying without saying it that our government is more efficient than yours. Their political strategies and their political parties, uh, whether it's a communist or a democratic nation or whatever, um, is that the implication is that our way is better than your way. Our way of government and ruling is better than your way of government and ruling. And the same thing goes with the religions. Our way, of re our, our religion is better than your religion. And so my dad and I are here to challenge that. Is it? So we're not being disrespectful. We're not, you know, anything like that. But we're here to test all things, including you. So, and we come in peace. So, so long. In the name of Yahweh, say that Yahweh Messiah, sweet old word. So the principle of testing all things 
is inclusive of, as, as Paul, they call him, but we call him Saul of Tarsus. As he wrote to the Thessalonians, Dokimasa in Greek, to test, to examine, to prove, to scrutinize, to see whether a thing is genuine or not. As of metals, to recognize as genuine after examination, to approve, to deem worthy. So dokimazo, all pas. In coin Greek, pas means individually, each, every, any, all, the whole, everyone, all things, everything, collectively, some of all types. Catechol, to retain from going away, to hold fast, keep secure, Keep possession of that what is chaos, that what is beautiful, handsome, excellent, eminent, choice, surpassing, precious, useful, suitable, commendable, admirable, good, excellent in its nature and characteristics, and therefore well adapted to its ends or purposes. Genuine, approved, precious, joined to the names of men designated by their office competent, able, such as one ought to be, praiseworthy and noble. That what is Kelos. Apekomai, an ancient coin, to hold oneself off, to refrain, to abstain. Abstain from all idols. E-I-D-O-S in the English translation. The external or outward appearance, form, figure, shape or form from every kind of poneros, every kind of wickedness, every kind of bad, full of labors, annoyances, hardships, pressed and harassed by labors, bringing toils, annoyances, perils, of a time full of peril to the true faith and steadfastness, causing pain and trouble, bad, of a bad nature or condition, in a physical sense, diseased or blind, in an ethical sense, evil, wicked, or bad. So these are from the Thayer lexicon. And the edits are by myself and my dad. Mm -hmm. um, so when Saul of Tarsus wrote this, he was considering all of the false, him and I, or with my dad, sorry, they were considering all of the false teachings in leaven. There were all, we consider it leaven, false teachings. So like yeast, like goes into bread, and it's just a little tiny of sprinkling, and it can go from flat bread and it can change the entire makeup of the loaf of bread. And so when you consider and how that's applied to uh, um, in our lives today, something's wrong. The idea that, that a lot of nations and governments have in their rule and the governance of people is to try and help. So you've got so you've got one form and you got another form in various forms and they each help the people within their borders. You ever notice that? When the United States or Canada or, or uh, Russia or China or any of these nations, they're concerned about their own citizens more than they are about others. There's something wrong there too, man. So if what one government or what one political party or, or type or what one religion is doing is only helpful or only seeks to serve themselves and those within uh, close proximity to them, their supporters and followers and such, what does that imply? Enmity towards others. So... I'm not anti-government. Don't don't start, you know don't don't misunderstand me. I'm not I'm not against I'm against uh, bad way of government and bad uh, religion. I'm ag I'm against things that hurt people. Are you? So now, when you examine and you're honest about things and you look at the history of things, uh, it's. Uh, it's clear that something's very, very, very wrong. You've got, uh, 
everything from wars, uh, famine. Uh, why are people in like Africa uh, or anywhere in the world uh, starving to death when people in the West and other parts and in the East are fat? And, uh, and have plenty, more than enough. You know, I mean, uh, a lot of you have heard of that and you've seen videos and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and you're aware of the situation. But why is that? So, so the reason why the creator of all things and his firstborn son who is one has allowed things to happen a lot of people will, will call him God. Uh, we'll get into that in the next video. Maybe. His name's not God. He's not God. God is etymologically associated with the word Hoden. Hoden has uh, Proto-Indo-European. And uh, it, it's, it's like Odin, like, like the mythological dad of Thor. He's not, he's not God. He's Oyam. And... Uh, so the reason why he's like, because people will say, well, if he's so good, then why does he allow all this bad stuff to happen? Good question. Freedom of choice. He loves you, but he may not necessarily, and he supports freedom of choice, but just like me, he may not support the choice you make. So now... When, when a person's choices that they make and when these, all these government groups and these religions and such are doing things that hurt others, that is not advantageous to everyone, is it? So uh, people have talked about like a one government, one world government, things like that. Um, uh, how can we get along better? How could we do better? How, and, and searching for ways to do that. And, but... And then we, but we keep things separate. That's one problem. And then we try to mix good with bad, things that work with things that just don't work. So that's clay and iron. Clay is like the things that don't work. Iron are the things that do. Like iron, like authority. And clay is like, it's not the real deal. So. When you, when you carefully examine and you're honest and you look at it, government, politics, and religion should be one. The Almighty, uh, Yahweh, or Yah, hmm. and his firstborn is on. Hmm. He is government. He is religion. And he said, pure religion is when you help the widows and the orphans in their distress. His law also says to love others more than you love yourself. He says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your enemies. When you see your enemies hungry and thirsty, give them something to eat and drink. Not shoot them and kill them. And not put them in prison for life. And not persecute them. because they believe something different than you. So, how does it, how is it possible that, like, like you know, one of the things too is, is uh, push past all this stuff to, to, to look at everyone's differences, and then and, uh, is that unless it was for him, unless it's for Yahweh, Yah, it's just not. See, a lot of you go come, a lot of you go go, and you you have these ideas and ways of doing things, and uh, and uh, the governments of this world and everybody else that he's allowing everyone to sort of just. Make not sort of, but he's allowing everyone to just make their own choices and see what happens. Like that's, so he's good. He allowed because he allows freedom of choice. He just doesn't support the choices you make. So demonstration, uh, side note, right? So side note, the prophecies, Jonathan bin Zabdak. 
and John the Simmons of the uh, people call it revelations. Uh, don't don't rely too much on the translations you see in what they call the Bibles. They're pretty butchered, okay. um, which is obvious to some of them, others, but that's okay. It's right. um, where he returns, he returns at a time where everybody, we're all like like us creative persons on this world, like not myself, but who are fallen. We're on the brink of destroying ourselves. How good would he be then if he allowed that to happen? And at just the right time, he he comes back. His firstborn aspect of him. He's always here. He's overall through all and in all. But an aspect of him, Yahweh, not Jesus. Yahweh, or Yahushua, some people say. Same person. His only begotten son. Formulated in his thoughts. Built or created. And then his word became flesh, you know, spermatosa. He didn't have to lay with, with Mary, neither did his messenger, Gabara, my brother. Just had to tell her. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Hmm. Not so instantaneously. Pregnant. So half of him was built fresh to new Adam. And the other half, Ben of Adam, son of Adam. And of Abraham, Yitzhak, Jacob, and of Jesse, and of David. And when he returns, that aspect of him, he is God, and he is self, and he is the only El there is. It's at just the right time. If he chose to interfere directly now and and go to war, uh, you know, to protect uh, to protect people, uh, he would also be interfering with the developments of your free choice and the consequences thereof. So when he comes back at the end of this day, meaning the end of this thousand years. Like the firstborn aspect of him, he's already here. Bearing witness continuously, and he is deeply grieved. It'll be just at the right time, right before you destroy yourselves. So, I mean, just look around. Look online. Go look at uh, some of the news. Hmm. The real news. And, uh, I mean, people hate people, man. People hate people just because they're people. People hate their people. Other people, black people hate black people. Black people hate white people. White people hate black people. Brown people. I'm, I'm, I'm white. And I got native, I'm part native too. Native American. I got an Indian status card, and things like that. Canadian. And I grew up being hated by who I thought were my own family because of this. A lot of them. That's, that's the effects of residential school and things like that. So, which sort of uh, ties into what, uh, what the testing all thinks. Uh, all of this does. This is uh, crucial. So, what we read earlier about so Saul of Tarsus wrote to the Thessalonians referred to by many as chapters five verses twenty one and twenty two. Doki Manso Opa Test all things. Kazako that what is kelos. Hold fast to that what is good. Apekomai. Abstain from all idols, all kinds. Poneros, all kinds of wickedness, evil, bad. This was in consideration of the false teachings or leaven that were already at his time and before, creeping in and had crept, threatening Yahweh, his children and those who could be recut into the covenant, saved, 
and even the essence of the true person of those who were lost. It is written of Yahweh say in the only begotten, his only begotten men, the son of Yahweh Hosei, who is the very same person, not a second or third person, not a two or three in one, but the built, built aspect of his dad and person having the very same mind, therefore being the very same person. Um, he is a very same person. You can see, uh, I mean, careful with the Bibles of Pretty much, but I've got some footnotes on the, on the writing of it, uh, which will be available soon. Mm-hmm. Got the document completed, test all things, mission statement. That's my, my back mm-hmm. completed. So you can look up John 1 1 to 5, uh, verses 10 to 14, as well with that chapter. And then chapters four, chapter 14, verses 9 to 11. Then Genesis 1 verse 1 In the beginning, O Young created. So I said that because in the beginning was this word. Where does this word really? And his, his word became flesh what's amongst us and what do we do that? so he said and he diastolomai he commanded them saying take oil take heed beware of the Pharisees of the leaven of the sorry of the zume of the Pharisees of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herodes Herod. Um, that's in Mark uh, eight fifteen. There was some debate amongst Yahweh students as to what this meant. Some questions that were posing regarding it. And what is seen in Mark's account of this? What is last accounted is. Yahweh says, stating in 8, verse 21, and he asked them, how is it that you do not understand? In Matthew and Yahweh's account of this, it is written that after Yahweh say asked them this, they then understood. I believe it as Yahweh say showed them from different aspects of himself, the only begotten and the rest of them, that the Zume, or Sar in Hebrew, leaven, yeast in English um, that uh, Yahweh referred to as false doctrines and teachings. So there's false doctrines and teachings in government, there's false doctrines and teachings in, in all, all politics, well, all the politics of this world, I mean. Sorry. There's false doctrines and teachings in all the religions. There's false doctrines and teachings within what they call families here. Uh, and what do they do? It may seem to help you or you feel good for some sort of gratification, but it hurts others. So if something is hurting others, and it's not an advantage to every person there is, it is only logical that it can't be good. So what we just read about the, uh, or shared about Mark 8.15 and about the leaven of the Pharisees, so we also see this concern addressed by Yahweh Hosei and Yontan ben Zabja, or John the son of Zebedee, in 1 John 4, verses 1 to 3, where it is written properly, Beloved, believe not every pneuma. So pneuma is contextually the spirit. So people say spirit, soul, and body is two dimensions. There's the dream dimension, and there's this one. Right? You have a body, and when you die, first death, your soul, you as a person, leaves that body temporarily and you go asleep. He talks about that in scripture. He says, when he reassures people that they didn't die, they're just sleeping and people mock him for saying that. Just like maybe some of you are mocking me right now. So, now, pneuma, contextually, the spirit, i.e., the vital principle by which the body is animated, the rational spirit, the power by which the created person feels, thinks, well, by which all people personally will feel, or decides. The soul, soul, called also in Greek, suke. Pneuma also means breath. Hmm. So, uh, in 
In Hebrew, it's rosh. Some people say ruach, but it's a rosh. So, believe not every new mind. Believe not every soul. Believe not every person. Don't believe everyone. Don't believe me just because I even say it. But dokimazo, there's that word again. Test, examine, prove, and scrutinize. Don't do it in a way that hurts people. Right, don't waterboard them and torture them and stuff like that. <laughs> don't disrespect them. Don't throw rocks at them. Don't shoot them. Don't kill them. Just because they believe something different than you. So, believe not, beloved, believe not every every person, but test the persons, the numa, to see whether or not they are of Alvion, if they're truly sent by the, by the Most High. Why? Really important. Because many pseudo-prophetes, many false prophets have gone out into the cosmos, the Eretz in Hebrew, or the world in English. So, dangerous, man. You get someone that comes along and they're and they're telling you and they're causing you to believe your entire life that a certain way is good, that this is the that the way we're doing things is right. That the way the Canadian government is right, or the way the American government is right, or you know, or or, or, or the Russian government or Chinese government or Roman Catholic Church, I was about to say Roman Catholic. And Protestants. But or, or 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 Shia Muslim or Sunni Muslim or, or or Buddhist or Hindu or whatever it is that we we grow up believing that's truly right, that's truly the good way, and 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 and, and that's all uh, many of us have known, many of you have known for so long, and so you truly believe it's right. So what happens is if you don't test every person to see whether they're truly sent by the Almighty. There could be trouble. Love you. So this is also supported by others as witnesses, such as Mose, or some people call Moses. When Maya and his dad had him right. When a Nabiah, hmm, a prophet, speaks in the name of Yahweh, if what was debar, what was declared, does not follow nor come to pass, then what was debar, declaration, was not something Yahweh debar declared. But the Nabia has Debar spoken, Zadwan, presumptuously. You should not go on, assemble together for him. And that was what my brother Mose, my, one of my dad's sons, wrote uh, in what it's called now, uh, Deuteronomy 18, verse 22. So the reason why you hear it differently than what you may be reading in the Bible is my dad and I have gone to, well, he's the Almighty. And then he's shown me to go to like certain sources like Strong's, but mind you, and the BDB lexicon, but there's still false and things like that there. So uh, trying to get it back to the original way, this is the restoration of all good things. So here is something that Math and Yahoo, oh, the reason I'm leaning forward if you see me like this, I've got a, uh, this beautiful document that my dad and I wrote, hmm. the Test All Things Mission Statement. And so I'm reading it as I go. I, I just want to get it right. Test All Things. Just because someone might be sharing something and it's totally true, and making uh, a declaration, it's 100 true. You still have to be careful. Of course you can. You know, very, very, very careful. So, here is something that Mathen Yahuwah, which means gift of Yahuwah, hmm. and mine, his dad wrote, that really goes well with Deuteronomy 18.22. Day. So, in the original, it means moreover, not beware. Look at the etymology if you, if you want to. Um, the first word in, in that, uh, in Mathen uh, Yahuwah, or what is called Matthew, by some. 7 verses 15 and 16, but if you look at the first word, it says, beware of them. It's supposed to say, de, in the uh, ancient Greek, so 
It means moreover of pseudo prophetes, false prophets, uh, hostes, etes, hoti, whoever, whatever, who go to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, inwardly they are harpax, rapacious, ravenous, or an extortioner, a robber. Inwardly they are ravenous lucos, wolves. You will recognize them by their carpos, their fruits. So, do men collect grapes from thorny plants or figs from chabalos, a thistle? So it's really simple. You go, you go shopping, or you, go, or maybe you're a hunter, maybe you're a trapper. You don't go up to an apple tree to to get uh, blueberries, do you? <laughs> If you do, maybe you're young and you're you just inexperienced. That's quite understandable. But generally speaking, if you know, you know, you know, you're not going to go up to a to a, to a horse to to a female horse to get milk. You're not going to go up to a, a house cat to get to get a glass of milk, are you? So uh, it's the same thing with 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 if you're careful with testing people and you don't allow your emotions to lead you. Right, because it can be irritating, even what you're hearing from me and my dad today. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> um, it's not easy, maybe hearing this. There's some guy coming along and and testing. It's like, who does he think he, you know? Careful. Love you. You know, we're not we're not here to disrespect you, but you just got to look at things and be honest. Like, this is. So, this is not something new, so what is read about, so Matanyah, you know, uh, beware of uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. You'll recognize them by their carpal's fruits. So I think that often, too, they don't even know they're wolves in sheep's clothing. Why would someone set out to purposely, uh, except for devils, but I mean people that don't know, like just generally, uh, like the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees and then a lot of religious people nowadays, uh, people that call them priests and caliphs and uh, imams and, and pastors and teachers. And why would somebody set out on purpose to deceive others? You know what I mean? Like I've seen a lot of loving people, <laughs> really caring Muslim people and Christian people and like really, really nice people. And, uh, you know, so, I, you know, but saying the wrong thing, even in the nicest possible way there is, is still saying the wrong thing. And it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. So this is not something new that in ter that is in ter in new or, sorry, that is not something that is new in terms of a new idea or approach to ensure that people are being taught properly. That what is being shared and disseminated is helpful, productive, encouraging, corrective, saving, graceful, loving, peaceful, brings peace and reconciliation does not hurt others, does not provoke others to bad things, does not confuse, and is advantageous to everyone appearance. <clears throat> Just examine the amount of fighting, wars, crimes, hatred, discrimination, division, strife, covetousness, selfish ambition, and rebellion in the earths, in earth. When so many think they are doing the right thing, believing the right thing, supporting the right cause, and by implication, what others believe, practice, preach, support, and advocate are at odds with what others preach, practice, preach, or support, believe, and advocate. The example of Flavius Valerius Constantinus, Constantine the Great, who in the name of Jesus, a false name by the way, we'll get into that another time, another lesson, his misunderstanding of who the creator of all things is, and who his firstborn is, and the symbol of the chi and ro, refer to the false vision and just the dream he had. Uh, you can look it up on uh, Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia is about 80% true, I've learned, uh, accurate with things. Uh, not everything there is in it, but like no, no encyclopedia in this world is, though. Whatever it's, uh, New World Encyclopedia or elsewise, it's not. So, um, so with the symbol of the Chi in Rome, the name of Jesus, Constantine, killed many people, invaded lands, plundered, looted, conquered, dominated, and enslaved many people. 
He even took the bodies of those he killed and defeated and paraded the bodies in the streets, sometimes decapitated. People called him a liberator and a defender of the faith and a saint. A hero. He's called an apostle by some. And a saint by the Pope and many others. And many believe the Pope's word is infallible. This is how a saint, like the idea of like a good, righteous, loving, beautiful person, an apostle, one sent forth by the Almighty, by the creator of all things, who is a hub, whose love is to conduct themselves. Enslaving others, decapitating their bodies and parading them, them, the, the dead bodies around to intimidate others for filthy lucre, sport, and selfish ambition. Legalizing the worship of any L, false L, and the practice of any religion. The next example is with the Sunni Muslim man named al Nasir Salah al Din Yusuf ibn Ayyub Saladin who, after being shown kindness by Shia Muslims in the Fatimid Caliphate who took him in, put him to work, fed him, clothed him, and even promoted him in the ranks for his performance in the killings of Christian men, just as Buzz Barbar as he, in battles against the Crusaders, amongst other things, to being a vizier. He then undermined the Caliphate and the trust of many and realigned Egypt's allegiance with the Sunni, Baghdad-based Abbasid Caliphate, Who's caliph for who's caliph for killing other Muslims who were members of the group he undermined and betrayed, and for killing crusaders, awarded Saladin for proclaiming him to be the Sultan of Egypt and Syria. You can look that up on Wikipedia. Or uh and same thing with Wikipedia Massacre and Ayadea. Saladin was also known for other atrocities that many Muslims, Judaists, Christians, other religious persons, and non-religious persons have committed at Genghis Khan. Such as when he and his forces captured Christian crusaders as prisoners of war and ordered them to be beheaded when many of them were already in chains. Not any of them had any more weapons and could not pose a further threat. On another occasion, it was called the Massacre of Ayodea, in retaliation against the crusaders led by King Richard I for having committed the atrocities of beheading and putting to the sword around 3,000 unarmed Muslim men, women, and children, for them not having handed over what King Richard I referred to as the true cross, which can't even be substantiated to exist. What an unreasonable demand. 100,000 gold pieces and over 1,600 Christians held captive. Saladin had those over 1,600 Christian prisoners of war beheaded. Let me tell you. So do wrongs make a right. Saladin, the word Saladin is related to the term righteous. To be righteous. To be good. Why not? I mean, like, with their beliefs and stuff like that, why, why not try to convert them? Why not love them and be kind? They would want to join you. I don't, not that I'm saying I support that, but like with joining Islam or, or being a Christian or whatever, but I mean, it's just a thought. There are some who, like Constantine for his actions, hail Saladin as a hero and a liberator. Furthermore, Christians as well as Muslims and every other false religious group there is, have oppressed various sects and denominations within their own religion and without, even going so far as to rape, sodomize, murder, sexually assault and harass, imprison for great lengths, often for life or until execution hold hostage and torture by various methods, ranging from sensor depri sensory deprivation and waterboarding. And they call themselves good? To what happens to my sovereign and my El, Yahweh, the only begotten bin or son of Yahweh, <laughs> being not a separate person, but nor a duality, nor a trinity, or otherwise, but one and the same person. 
His word having become flesh in another aspect of his temple, born of Mary. He was tried unjustly, imprisoned wrongfully, scourged so badly, his flesh hung off of him in ribbons, pieces, and chunks. And they thought they were doing the right thing. He was mocked and spit on, beaten, beaten. And he didn't even resist them at all. Bruised, and a crown of long thorns placed on his head, with the thorns driven deep into his scalp. He was stripped naked and forced to carry a heavy, long stake, log stake, in that condition in front of a lot of people. And he loves everyone more than he loves himself. How would you feel? Any other man would have perished by what he had already gone through. With your historical support. I start except they call him Jesus. And they're talking. I'm not real mind that he was just to you. I think that's his name. That's what you kind of think. I love you. Um, we'll get to that. In front of so many people, he fell onto the weight of a stake with dirt. Getting in. And who knows what that dirt would be to? Maybe someone urinated. Maybe. Or an animal. How many camels and stuff? Defecated in that soil. And it got into his wounds. And thankfully, someone was ordered by a Roman soldier to care, help him carry his. Storos, stake on the cross. Look at the analogy. Once he had arrived at Har Golgoth, Hill of Skulls, for his unjust, cruel, and brutal execution, he was made to lie upon his stake. Imagine his bleeding, dirty wounds and exposed nerves and other tissue. The agony. The he shouldn't be ashamed. He created you. And he was dying. <laughs> and the people he loved more than himself then hammered nails through the two large lateral bones in his lower arm and his small wrist bones that were capable of holding up a person's body. No stores. A stick. Ah. I got some information there too about the anatomy and everything. I don't look it up here. No. <laughs> it's a pretty serious topic. Too. It's pretty serious to come out to the world and say it wasn't a cross. <laughs> um, I hope you got it. I love you. Approach it with science. Be true. Be honest. Don't let emotions detect, dictate or determine your next course of action. Any decisions. Um, they stretched them out. All right. Note that if the nail was placed between the metacarpals, the weight of the person, it just right, would be held up. So, you got, you got to look at the anatomy. So, whereas if it's here, it just it depends. Or, you have to look, you know, you have to look at the anatomy. I'll, I got a, a link that uh, you should be seeing the screen. If you haven't seen it already. Um, and the heel bone. So I guess some of you guys have heard of this Yohan and Hagakol. So this heel bone, there's evidence that it was called storo. Storos is a stake. Storo. Storo is the action of putting someone on the stake. I think all our Christian fiction members know this. This translation. Um, Stretching him brutally over his storos, an upright stake, especially a pointed one, because the figure lexicon like has it correct with that part, but it's very mistaken in it having a cross. With their second definition, it's a, in no way does the etymology of the word storos indicate a crossing of a piece of wood on itself, or the crossing of two pieces of wood on each other. Plus, there's no archaeological evidence. Remember, remember King Richard I demanded the true cross. And what happened when Saladin couldn't, and, and, and Muslims couldn't uh, come up with it? And then Saladin, that's where misunderstanding gets you. 
Ja, natürlich. Hedinger Sitz. Das ist echte Hedinger, ja. Das ist doch wieder. The English word cross was wrongly written in place of stories. Please test this out to see if it's true. Remember? Don't just believe it because I said it. And because my dad said it. With me and true me. By the way, it's like freedom of expression. Um, with him fastened to his stories, he was then quickly lifted to be vertically lined up and on center with the pre dug small pit, the tight dug for fence posts to ensure they anchor correctly. First thing to fall, roughly fall into. <laughs> This caused him a great deal of pain. Mm -hmm. Carefully consider all his wounds and overall physical condition. If you look at the anatomy of a man's wrist, not human, side note, that's how many die. Uh, etymologically really related that word to uh, evolution, health and evolution. I'm not homo sapiens, so I come from uh, an ape. Good. If I did. Um, I want to cover that in one video. Um, this caused him a great deal of pain. So carefully consider all his wounds and overall physical condition. He was naked. This all because of persons who refused to believe he is the most high. Logic was showing them he was truth. He's a person. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. His capacity has no beginning or end in size. And as such, he is. Before anything that was made that was made, what did he have to work with for building material? If not, not anything else was made. Himself. The cutting, we'll get into that later, but the cutting made in, in from his image. You have all the same aspects as him. It's just that we created persons to have a capacity, where smaller capacity. It's not that he didn't pour himself out in the fall. It's just if he'd given the same exact amount to a woman, she would be a woman, would she? She'd be a man. <laughs> so, you know, we'll get into that some other time. But so, this treatment of him and all the treatment of everyone throughout history is all because of persons who refuse to believe he's the creator of all things, the Almighty. They never thought it would be possible. Oh, his word became seed. Are you telling me that is worth it? Yeah. Not of corrupt flesh, though. Not of Adam. Mm -hmm. Brand new and fresh, undefiled. He didn't sleep with Mary uh, or lay with her. Neither did Gabaral, my brother. Just did the message. Faith comes by healing. Like he said, let her be light. And there was. And she believed. And, uh, and so in that aspect, he, she is not the mother of the Almighty. Careful. Just his mom. Like the first one's mom in that aspect. Hmm. So, you know. Um, that's his daughter. And anyone who does his will is written is his brother, sister, or Ima, his mom. It's all because the persons are refused to believe. There are misunderstandings of scripture and prophecy concerning the Messiah, concerning him, refusing to understand their insistence that he was lying, that he was a false prophet and teacher and their preconceived notions. How does that sound? Are you watching this video right now insisting I'm lying? I can't be. Are you turning red a little bit? Love you. I forgive you. I love you. We gotta push past this stuff and we gotta look at truth. What is truth? A person. And he needs to be declared and he needs to be allowed to declare himself without getting hurt. 
freedom of expression. When someone says something, how do you feel about it? Are you going to be like Saladin? Or are you going to truly submit to the Almighty? Are you going to test all things, including the Quran? Love you, though. Don't get mad, please. Really love you. Uh, are you going to test out things that people tell you, like what I'm telling you? I hope so. But don't give up. Don't be like, I thought something. I knew it. I knew he was wrong. Just don't be an email address you can you can write to me at if you want. Please don't send me an email. <laughs> My dad just shares that email address with me. <laughs> so I say that goes with the Christians. Anybody doesn't matter, Christian or not, Muslim or not. Love you. We need answers. We need to know. Right. And if you got someone that knows, right, we should go there. I don't know at all, that's for sure. I'm a creative person. <laughs> he knows all. He knows it. <laughs> so, um, he was just being himself. Their misunderstandings of scripture and prophecy concerning him, refusing to understand their insistence that he was lying, that he is a false prophet and a false teacher, and their preconceived notions. And they killed the one who created him. And he wouldn't even resist them when he could call upon them. My brother, and Rabbi Ramiakul, and the rest of our army, to defend him. Right? 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 Demonstration. Remember, he said, that to forgive them, they don't know what you're doing. I'm pretty sure that Saladin and, and uh, King Richard I and uh, Constantine and Pope Gregory and various others, uh, certain Hindus and, and others as well. Even some Buddhists didn't know what they were doing. So, now, he did not provoke others to these actions, nor did he even hate them, but he even forgave them as they were hurting him and doing. He is love, he always forgives. He does not keep it a record around him. Oh, he'll keep a judicial record of wrongs. That's different. He's going to protect his children his nation. That's different than a personal vendetta, a personal record. Okay. They did not know what they were doing, and many truly believed that they were doing him, Yahweh al Yah, a service by killing him. Of course, they didn't make that connection in their mind that that's him. They didn't believe. Otherwise, they wouldn't. Would you kill the one who created you? If you knew him, and you knew what he's like, like I do. <laughs> if you love him, like I do. So, similar to Constantine, Saladin, the Catholic popes, Muslim leaders, Jewish leaders, political leaders, and many others, they all thought, think they were, are doing the right thing. But how is what they are doing or have done loving and supportive of everyone? When so many are being unjustly imprisoned, tried, hurt, executed, marginalized, discriminated against, and persecuted. Like nuclear bombs. And other various weaponry. <clears throat> I'm so glad that Yahweh saved Rose from the dead and secured my salvation and that he took that unlawful, illegal sentence. See, because to die on a stake, if you look in the Old Covenant, mm. cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree. It was, it was, it was, it was, a, it was an option for a righteous, lawful execution, like story. So when the priests and stuff said, like put him to the stake, stole rule in response to Pilate, um, they were what they thought, they, they thought they were doing a service. Put him to the zulon, the tree, not a cross. See, Jewish people back in the day knew, and like I know, like my dad knows, that the cross is an ugly symbol. They were slaves in Egypt. There was the Ankh. They were also, Abraham came out of Ur of the Chaldeans. And if you look at Ezekiel 8, if you're interested, um, it talks about that, the symbol of al Yom's jealousy. It talks about Tammuz and the symbol of jealousy. And if you look it up, 
look up at this uh, Encyclopedia Britannica or Wikipedia. It'll show a scraven image of, 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 of the Muzi carrying a cross. And he's a resurrection uh, entity or a resurrection L, false, false L. Sound familiar? And also there's a, there's a Trinity aspect, uh, Osiris Horus, and, uh, the Isis Trinity thing. There's a lot of, lot of there's a lot of leaven, a lot of false teachings in the Bibles and, and all the books on earth on the earth right now. Pretty much almost all of them. So now I'm glad he rose from the dead. He uh, he took that unlawful legal sentencing and he imparted it to me his innocence. And having served the sentence of death that I deserve. And having done the same for so many others who, who believe, surrender in love, hmm. which is a beautiful act. <laughs> what better than one? How, who better to, to to surrender to than the one who is literally love and loves you more than he loves himself? What a creature! <laughs> this is roughly he's with things everywhere. <laughs> so, um, and can be and get baptized, recut. So the cutting, we'll get into that another time, but the cutting he made in and out almost from his image, bra, and very often, his covenants. If you look up the word bra, uh, if you want to, can I get prepared for the next, uh, the next, uh, maybe the next, uh, one of the next ones. Um, he made his in and out from his image, and then with the Noah, with Nosh, uh, he didn't establish and make his covenant, look up the word, he extended it, he protected it with him because everyone else fell away out of the world. And so, and, and then you notice, if you look up uh, Noah, like Genesis 6 and such, uh, it'll say he, he established, but look at the word, the etymology, test all things. Nosh didn't fall away. He was scared. So of course my dad explained to him and his dad explained to him, so, <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. I'll cut the cover. You know, he, he, the covenant was already cut. He was already cut. He never fell away. Recut is for someone who fell away like I did. That's being baptized, born again. And so we'll cover that another time. But uh, recut in his true name. It is written. There's only one name by, by which you can be saved. One name, not ten million different ways to say it, or or five different transliterated or translated ways to say it. One name. I don't mean to sound like, you know, I don't want to make, come across like I'm being uh, rude or anything. Or, but you got to, it's his name. Man. It's like my name is Zion. My legal name on, on my birth certificate is different. Mm -hmm. But my baptized name is Xiaohua. Al Xia. Ben Yahua Se. Ben Yahua Hose. Ben is son, son of Yahua Se. Because he adopts you when you get born again. Ben, son of. <laughs> He's the only begotten son. Is not me. So, um, there's a bunch of scriptures you can compare. Um, so, hopefully, um, we'll see you soon. And, uh, and that uh, you've read everything. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, send me an email. I'd love to hear from you, man. And, uh, or, women, whatever. And um, please be nice. You know, I'm not here to start trouble. I'm here to poke around with my, with my dad hmm. and kind of say, is that really true? You know, really? And is what you're believing really advantages to everyone? And why don't we know? He said his people die for lack of knowledge. And, but if you reject knowledge, he'll reject you, not because he's being rude or mean. How do you talk to someone that won't listen? He doesn't force himself on people, right? He doesn't. He doesn't take the aida, the community, by force. He's not a Saladin or a Constantine or a Richard, King Richard the <laughs> First. And um, so, you know, he lets you learn obedience by suffering, just like he did when he was alone before anything was made. It was made. How lonely was he? Since it was time had no beginning. How long? How lonely would you be if you were the only one to exist? 
So anyways, uh, love you, and uh, see you soon. In the name of Yahweh, in Yahweh, Jose. Shalom. So